Hello, and welcome to the final installment of the Military Tutorials series. It's finally time to tackle Mark's Dwarves, plus cover squad assignments from the V menu, something that was excluded from the first part. With everything that's been covered so far, very little new concepts are left to learn. This last part should be a breeze, so let's just tackle it head on. Mark's Dwarves are one of the harder things to get working correctly in the game, but not because they're unpredictable and complex. They're hard to get working because they have a longer checklist than other military squads, and some of the checkboxes are easy to forget about. Where melee squads require a schedule, a training barracks, and a weapon if you care what they train, a ranged squad requires a schedule, an archery target, a training range designated from that archery target with proper settings, a ranged weapon, a quiver, and ammunition. And that's just to get them training. They also need to be managed more specifically in combat as well, else they simply become a melee squad wielding crossbow-shaped clubs. So let's cover the process of making a Mark's Dwarf squad and getting them training first. A lot of this is familiar to you now, since you totally watched my previous military videos, right? So I won't be explaining any hotkeys or menus already covered. First, you will need a Mark's Dwarf squad. What makes a Mark's Dwarf squad instead of a melee squad is simply the uniform. Create or edit any regular squad and set their uniform to Archer, or make your own uniform. If you choose to make your own, the important parts to include are a ranged weapon and a quiver. With those items present in the uniform, the equipped soldiers will automatically be ready to train and fight as Mark's Dwarves. You can have some Mark's Dwarves in a squad of otherwise melee dwarves too, though I wouldn't recommend it as it complicates controlling the different soldiers. To do so, if you want, simply change specific position uniforms to include the ranged weapon, a task covered in the uniforms part of this series. Speaking of the things they need, they also need ammunition. Obviously, you need to have ammunition available in the fort, but also, you need to have it assigned to the squad in the military menu. The final submenu we have yet to cover is Ammunition, accessed by pressing F. Well, I suppose we haven't covered supplies either, but does anyone actually use that? I guess I'll explain it later. For now, let's visit the Ammunition menu and make sure our Mark's Dwarves are able to use the ammunition that's available to them. Like the other submenus, use the arrow keys to navigate the middle section and highlight the squad in question. If they have the default Archer uniform on, then they will already show Bolts 250 here, with C and T to the right. That means that any and all Bolts are used for both training and combat, and that the entire squad is assigned 250 Bolts to be split up among its members. That's important to remember. This is the total bolts for the squad, so if there's 10 dwarves, each will only carry 25. That may not be what you want, it's certainly not what I want. Or you may have designed your own uniform and nothing is here at all, so we can make some changes. Lucky for us today, the hotkeys up top are fairly limited and self-explanatory. We can delete the existing bolts entry by highlighting it and pressing D. Then we can add that entry back with C, because of course we need those bolts, what was I thinking? After pressing C, select the ammunition type from the list on the right. Bolts, obviously. Unless you're wielding foreign ranged weapons, which is an important note. If your new squad wields bows instead of crossbows, and you selected the default archer uniform, they will not be able to use their bows until you come here and add arrows instead. Starting to see why Mark's Dwarves seem so temperamental? Anyway, we can change the quantity with the plus, minus, forward slash, and asterisk keys. Each dwarf can fit just about 50 bolts in their quiver, so if you have a well-oiled bolt supply chain, then I recommend assigning a total of 500 bolts to the squad, but not necessarily 500 of the same kind. Here's why. With the new bolt entry highlighted, pressing shift C and shift T will change how they can be used, shown by the aforementioned C and T markers. You probably don't want your squad wasting steel bolts on archery targets, or shooting sharpened chicken bones at a forgotten beast. So more than one entry might be desired, one for training and one for fighting. To avoid dwarves needing to come back and swap out their bolts when a battle starts, you might want to set them to carry a certain number of training bolts as well as a certain number of combat bolts, totaling 500, or 50 per dwarf. So let's just make the second entry now with C, and then fill in the details. Pressing Shift-M with a bolt entry highlighted brings up a material selection. 
Like uniforms, there are some non-specific options, as well as some very specific options. You can select metal, for example, and use any metal bolt for combat. You can also select wood and bone, using any kind of wood or bone for training. You can also select any specific metal, any specific wood, and even any specific kind of bone if you so choose. It's worth noting that bolts do work much better or worse according to their material. Wood are the worst bolts. Weak and lightweight, they're hopeless when it comes to piercing armored targets, but they are economical for a hunter whose nemesis is an evasive turkey gobbler. Bone bolts are substantially better, though still not effective against armor. Depending on your embark and industries, bones can easily be more economical than wood though, and are a great way to eat through large stocks of bones. Metal bolts are not as straightforward, and tend to all do rather well. The big tip for metal bolts is that copper doesn't suck, unlike in most other military applications. Copper is plenty heavy enough to carry it through armor. The specifics on metal types are kind of muddy, and research is 10 years old now, so I would just use copper if I want a specific metal. I trust steel is a little bit better at least, but it would take a lot of steel production before I spent any on bolts. So let's change the materials of these two bolt entries to bone and copper. We'll set the bone for training and the copper for combat. We'll set the quantity of bone to 200 and copper to 300. Dwarves in this squad are now assigned to carry 20 bone bolts and 30 copper bolts. When training, they will use their bone bolts, keeping the copper bolts on hand, in case a giant winged toad shows up, with huge mandibles and a penchant for farting anthrax onto the local wildlife. Once your dwarves have equipped their ranged weapon, their quiver, and the appropriate ammo, they can use an archery target to train. This is the only way they can train with ranged weapons. Assigning a marks dwarf to a standard barracks will have them train using the weapon as a club, so do not bother with such a barracks here. Instead, build an archery target, first by entering the build menu with B, then shift A to choose archery target. You don't have to create the target at a workshop first. You build it on site like a wall, out of whatever material you want. Very easy. Once built, pressing Q and highlighting the target gives you the option to make archery range by pressing R. First, you size the room, which really just determines the maximum distance a dwarf can stand from the target. It doesn't matter how it's shaped or if it overlaps with other rooms. As long as there's room for a dwarf to stand directly north, east, south, or west, with at least one tile of space between them and the target. Every individual target needs to be designated as an archery range. It does not work to have one room include other targets. They need to be their own rooms. Again, overlap is fine. Once created, the room has one very important option, set by pressing W, A, S, and D. This is the shooting direction. This is the direction that the dwarf will shoot, so bottom to top means the dwarf will stand below the target and shoot upwards. Remember that the direction you choose needs to have space for the dwarf to stand with at least one square between them and the target. Finally, like any barracks, you need to highlight the squad you want to train with plus and minus, and press T to set them to train here. Lastly, they need to be scheduled to train if you want them to be training frequently. Like any other military soldier, they will choose to train here occasionally in their downtime, but not very much. There is no special kind of training order or option for ranged training. The same process as covered in my scheduling video is followed for a Marks Dwarf squad. Just make sure they have the targets instead of a barracks. Also worth noting is that these targets don't train skill nearly as quickly as live creatures. Even if the creature is immobilized and the dwarf misses, the dwarf will gain skill much faster shooting at it than at a target. That said, whether or not you want to go through the trouble of setting up a live creature target depends on bolt supply and patience. I never do, as I always have way too many bone bolts and way too little patience. And then there's combat. The last common issue with Marks Dwarfs. They find themselves in melee combat a little too often. It's really hard to avoid as enemies are quickly going to approach them, and once close enough, the Marks Dwarves will start whacking away with their crossbows like their funny-shaped pickaxes. To prevent this, it's often easiest to simply construct some kind of balcony or barrier that prevents the Marks Dwarves from approaching the enemy and the enemy from targeting the Marks Dwarves in melee. A raised platform, with an entrance from within the fort, for example, where the Marks Dwarves can be told to station during an attack. 
They can reach the platform from inside the fort, but there's no way up from the outside, thus guaranteeing that they only fight at a range. Designs for such a platform are a creative challenge. There are ways to protect your dwarves from other ranged enemies as they fire into the melee enemies instead. Designs can be made to fire down onto bridges, or to overlook a full 360 degrees as a sentry tower. It's way too much to cover in a video, and a rewarding pursuit. So I'll leave you to come up with some designs if you want to experiment with really putting your Mark's Dwarves to good use. Just remember that it's pathing that's important, and only works if the Dwarves, as well as their foe, are unable to engage in melee. Forbidden doors and hatches, or bridges if building destroyers are a concern, are excellent ways to achieve this. And that covers Mark's Dwarves pretty well. To recap, Mark's Dwarves need the following boxes checked to perform well, or at all. They need a uniform with a ranged weapon and a quiver, and of course to have those equipped. They also need ammunition, assigned and available, an archery target, an archery range assigned from that target with its options correctly set, to be set to train there, and finally, scheduled to train. They also really should have some kind of archery structure to keep them from running into melee when enemies get too close. And now for some odds and ends that haven't been covered. First, that Supplies submenu accessed by pressing U. This submenu allows us to change the amount of food and drink each soldier will carry with them. I imagine this is a much bigger concern when sending out raiding parties, though I can't really say since I don't actually do that. If you want to change how much your soldiers carry, then come to this menu, highlight the squad in question, and use the hotkeys above to change the quantities. Keep in mind that do not carry water doesn't mean only carry booze, it means don't carry anything to drink at all. Now let's briefly cover a small menu that I left out in the first part. I actually received a comment about this, so if you're watching, person who commented about assigning squads in the V menu, this one's for you. I don't personally use this menu ever, so I had cut it to save time, but it is convenient in certain circumstances. When you press V from the main screen to View Units and then highlight a dwarf, you see a menu for different settings. There's a lot to do here, and what we're looking for is in the Preferences submenu opened by pressing P. Here we can see lots of information, and also set some options for the Dwarf. This is a commonly used menu for players without a program like Dwarf Therapist, as it's where you come to assign labors, occupations, etc. in the vanilla game itself. You can also see if the Dwarf is in a squad and assign it to one from here. Domas the Butcher here is not in a squad, and so the squad line reads none. This list of squads here shows the squads of the fortress that the dwarf is not in. The squad that he is in would be shown on the squad line. With a squad highlighted, Domas can be assigned to it by pressing enter. You can remove him from his squad with X, or move him to a different squad by simply selecting that squad and pressing enter. It's important to remember here that because uniforms and schedules are set for positions and not dwarves, when Domas is moved to a new squad, he will now be assigned the uniform of his new position, as well as the schedule. So don't expect to hot swap dwarves between squads in the middle of a conflict. You may end up having a dwarf ducking out to get his new gear, or some other weird behavior. You can also create a new squad here by pressing N. You will receive a prompt to pick a uniform, just like in the military menu. You can also rename the squad that the dwarf is assigned to by pressing Shift N or even rename any squad in the list by selecting it and pressing Shift M. There are some instances where this might be useful. For example, if you need to start controlling a handful of civilian dwarves that are wandering outside or in the caverns to get them inside, you can easily use this menu to assign them all to a new squad with no uniform and then tell that squad to move wherever. It's easier than remembering their names and entering the military menu to make the squad there. It may also be a more natural place to manage some of the less detailed aspects of the military for those who already use the Unit Preferences menu frequently for assigning labors and occupations. I may not use it, but it's there for you. And that's it! The military tutorial is now over! It's far from a magnum opus, but it sure is a fat chunk of tutorial, and hopefully it keeps some of your fortresses safer. Knowledge, after all, is power. Not as much power as a handful of muscle shells dropped 10 feet onto someone's head, but power nonetheless. I'm not really sure what's coming next, 
At the time of recording this, the outlook for the premium version has been that it's due in the first half of the year, so I have a lot to think about, and potentially a lot to work on. This channel may get put into metamorphosis mode, where I work behind the scenes in preparation for much greater plans once premium is in our hands. I do stream regularly, life permitting, on Twitch, so if my YouTube channel does go quiet for a little bit, then you can find me there toiling away at my forts, or maybe even cooking something. Anyway. I'll see you there, or here, or somewhere.